Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. Today's show is a is a little bit of all three things we do around here. Before we get to that, I want to thank all of you for joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We're live every Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. right here. You can always catch the uh, rebroadcast of our show on HCC TV. Look for that in your cable providers. Also, uh, you can can follow us in social media. Look for us as Houston Community College District across all social media platforms. And we're available as podcasts. You can download the audio versions of all of our shows at hccs.edu slash podcast. We're talking about the Puente program today. You know, going to college can be an exciting adventure, but it can also be very intimidating. The Bridge or Puente program provides a community where students can learn how to take advantage of of all opportunities HCC provides. We're joined today, first up, by history professor Clayton Kahan to find out more about the Puente program. Good afternoon, Clayton, how are you? Uh, I'm terrific, thanks for having me, how are you? Good, good, why don't you tell us first off the mission of the Puente program? Uh, well, the mission of the Puente program is, is really simple. It's to, uh, I mean, the Puente program literally means bridge. It's about building bridges uh, between the college, the students, uh, community uh, at large. What we're hoping to do is to get students who uh, to come in, complete uh, two and four year degrees, uh, and then you know provide them uh, uh, the necessary mentorship, uh, the academic skills to go out uh, to do all of these things, and then to go out in their communities and be leaders in the community so that hopefully they'll come back to the college and be mentors uh, here as well. So it's not literally just that we want them to succeed. We want them to succeed, obviously, but we want them to go out and succeed in their communities and then come back and be part of the community here. One of the words that we use uh, in the Puente program or the bridge program all the time uh, is familia. And it really is about familia. It's about uh, we're all uh, we're all part of this. We're all familiar within this structure. And how do you find the students that are in this program? And how does the students find you? Uh, well, it's it, it's interesting. Where uh, it, here uh, in the last few in the last couple of years, uh, the Puente program uh, has been it's new. Uh, so a lot of it has been identifying students uh, at the high school level. So recruiting right. them there, uh, and then also. Uh, by putting together uh, a you know a web page and having uh, web presence, speaking about it in classes, uh, having you know the faculty who are involved uh, talk it up not only in their classes but talk it up to uh, other faculty, with the idea that the the other faculty, uh, even if they're not in in the program, they'll talk up the program to their students, so that hopefully students will hear this stuff and go, that's something I'd be interested in, so maybe I'll join and you know I'll be you know, part of the cohort, so to speak. Well, I'm going to get to that cohort in a second, but once the student joins or once they're recruited, how does the program work? Uh, do they register for classes, go to the program, work with advisors? How does that work? All of the, uh, all of that. And it's actually uh, in in terms of the the Puente students or the bridge students, uh, it's, it's priority for them. We have special advisors uh, for them, special uh, registration set up for them. Uh, they're actually once they're placed in the cohort, uh, we actually have the advisors who talk to them uh, through the process, throughout the entire process, who bring them along and they, you know, sit them down and talk about the classes and what classes they should be taking, uh, and you know, work the schedule out with them and literally place them into the classes uh, and and hopefully uh, maintain the cohort throughout so that you're. Uh, as a bridge student, you're taking your history class with, you know, other other bridge students. You're taking with the same students. Right. You're taking a STEM type of class or uh, an English composition class or or something along those lines. And how and are there requirements to be accepted into the program? And what type of students are you looking for? The only uh, the only requirement. Uh, that I'm aware of, and uh, my colleagues can correct me if I'm wrong, but the only requirement that I'm aware of is I want to be in, and that's it. I mean, uh, we are, I mean, 
the original, the national Puente program, when it was designed uh, in California, the original plan uh, was to, uh, to seek out uh, underserved populations of students. So groups that had traditionally been underserved uh, by the academic process uh, and provide them with the means to actually succeed uh, within the process. But now it's gotten to the point where you can't really look at it and say, you know, one group is underserved there. I mean, we've got class issues, we've got race issues, we've got all sorts of uh, different issues that create uh, this, uh, these types of uh, you know, lacks of lack of access. So really the only requirement is, do you want to be in the Puente program? If the answer is yes, come on in. You're welcome. Well, let me ask you this, because one of the biggest hurdles for our students um, yeah. is paying for college. Right. And uh, I mean, I know right now because of the pandemic, HCC has more money than ever to help students financially pay for all of their college. But before COVID and after the her funding is gone, are there special scholarships or funding allotments to help these students clear that uh, hole? We, we're very happy that we just uh, we've just started a work study program that is, I think, really competitive in terms of, of uh, in terms of pay. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's uh, not only just something that could get you some money to get through college, but it yeah. also. Uh, it also sets you up with, uh, you know, connections uh, to different offices within the college itself so that you're not kind of out there on your own. Um, and I know that we uh, I know that we also are connected uh, to a number of four year schools uh, in terms of running, uh, uh, you know, running enrollment processes. Right. And like So we can connect people uh, to get them scholarships for sure. There's you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to tell you that I know for certain that there's this scholarship and this scholarship, but right. you know, our, our reach is that we is such that we could certainly connect people uh, with scholarship opportunities. Let's talk about the cohort system. I know Coleman College does this when they bring in students and they develop somewhat of a camaraderie. They get study groups together. They get to know each other. They see each other in the classes. That's a right. benefit there. Um, obviously it benefits your students as well. Sure. Uh, no, no question. Uh, that's part of that. Uh, what I was talking about, about Familia before is that uh, once you're in that, I mean, I, I, if it were up to me and we'd strike out cohort and put Familia in because yeah. that, because that's what it's designed to do. It's about making sure that we're all, you know, we kind of have a common, a common goal that we're all trying to get through uh, this particular set of classes, but to make sure that we're all comfortable with one another, that we're all, we're all aware of what we're doing and, you know, not just that we can, you know, get each other through the classes, but, you know, if you notice that one of your, one of your cohort is, you know, hasn't been around for a couple of days. I mean, if you're going through all these classes, you're going to say, you know, Hey, I wonder where, you know, I wonder where he or she is. And, yeah, you know, it, it uh, to me, that's all, that's what uh, this whole process is about familia and bridge building. It's all about keeping people together, not, uh, not isolating them within the academy, but bringing them together within the academy. Clayton, one final question. We're running out of time, but let me ask you how this has affected you, the Puente program, as a faculty member. Uh, it, 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 immeasurably. It's, uh, I, I tell the story a lot, uh, and my colleagues who are going to hear this uh, are going are to be like, oh, God, this story again. Uh, I was not, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was cynical and ready to give up. Uh, but I was starting to think that, you know, maybe it was time to move on to something because I know I had certain ideas about what teaching a class ought to be uh, and certain ways to do it. Uh, and I really didn't feel like there were a lot of outlets to allow me to do that. Uh, and the Puente program, I mean, literally, the, you know, you had, to, you had to volunteer to do this. Uh, and as soon as we started our first uh, sessions, I was like, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the program that I have literally been waiting my entire career for. Uh, so to me, it was, it, it kind of gave a different energy to my teaching. It brought a, right. uh, it kind of removed some of the cloudiness, if you will, to where I was going, going, no, 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 I'm happy. I'm going to stick around for a while now. Cause you know, incredible. I kind of want to, I want to see this through and see how it plays out. Clayton, we appreciate you joining us this afternoon and singing the praises of the Puente program. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about the role faculty advisors play in the Bridge or Puente program. Stay tuned to the topic. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Thanks. 
Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or up in your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. For more than a year, we have kept you informed with more than 500 remote episodes. But now we're back, bigger and better, with more news and more guests. Join us live every weekday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube and on HCCTV at noon and 5 p.m. You can watch from anywhere. We go where you go. Welcome back to The Topic. We're live this uh, Tuesday afternoon, as we are every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Always watch the rebroadcasts of our show on HCC TV. Uh, we're talking about the Bridge or Puente program here on The Topic this afternoon, and we're joined by Natalie Garza, history professor and program coordinator of the Bridge program, and also Luisa Rochez, advisor for case management and pathways. Good afternoon to you both. Thanks for being here. Natalie, I want to start with you. Maybe you can tell us about some of the special content in the bridge classes designed to connect with our students. Hi, thank you. Uh, yes, so one of the things that is really important that when we go through training and, uh, you know, learn about what is kind of the, the bridge or Puente method, it's about engaging students um, and, and in a very intentional way that um, that engages their identity, right? Whether we're talking about culture, race, um, life experience, and, and that's done, like I said, with intention. And I think that that is something that's very different um, from other classes. I know that, you know, in other classes, I, I definitely like to talk about social issues and I like to talk about, you know, issues of race and I like to talk about, you know, popular culture and gender and things like that. But it uh, it has never been with um, the same focus, right? When teaching up with the class, like I said, it's very intentional. Uh, and uh, one of the things, you know, that you're doing with that is um, engaging the students. Uh, you have to know them a little bit better, right? If you if you want to engage them with how they identify, you need to know them better. Um, and so that's something that's different. Do you think being involved with this bridge program has improved your toolbox as a teacher? Definitely. And it uh, it's, it's also been a struggle because I, I feel like I was educated in a very traditional way with, you know, at the, at the college level with lecture and then you take notes and I learned how to teach in a very traditional way. So it's very challenging as an instructor also to, to try to think outside of the box and, and to break away from the lecture, because at least for me, uh, lecture is easy. It's easier to do than to try to think about like, okay, what kind of engaging activities am I going to do with the students? And that takes a lot of time right. to come up with them and to figure out like, how is this going to work? Uh, how is this going to connect with their life experiences and those kinds of things? And so it has, it has changed the way that I uh, approach my classes, the way I think about it. And uh, you know, looking for a lot, a lot more information to bring to them that's that's new and different. Do you work in hand, tandem with the bridge advisors? I know we're going to meet Louisa in a second, but uh, unlike teachers or instructors here at HCC, I don't think they normally work with advisors. But in this program, you get a chance to do so. Maybe you can talk about that. Right, and I think it's been a learning experience on both sides of it for both faculty and advisors. You know, for faculty, we sometimes get frustrated because the students, you know, if they're struggling or something, we have to submit a report, and then it feels like we don't know what happened. You know, where did it go? Right. What's with the students? Um, with the with the Bridge Puente program, it's not just the students that are, are familia, that are family. It's the faculty, the advisors, the administrators that are supporting it, and so. 
you know, we we talk directly with the advisors and say, you know, so and so is having difficulties. Can you follow up with them? And then we we, we you know are engaging in that way, and we know like what's going to happen. Uh, Luis, I want to bring you in the uh, conversation. I know when I went to college, uh, say a few years ago, um, I uh, I wound up when I graduated with probably at least an extra semester, if not more, of classes I did not need. And I know you guys work with students now to make sure they can avoid that because it costs you a lot of money and you waste a lot of time do so doing so. Maybe you can talk about how you help the Puente program students navigate their degree degree plan. Yes, definitely. So um, Puente does provide some uh, some courses that we do have. So my job is ensuring that each of our scholars are not taking, like you said, those extra courses that they don't need. And then not only is that money, that is extra time that they're spending with us. And so I have a, I sit down and I schedule with them and making sure that all of the courses that they are taking, they want to need and then will be a required course to transfer to the four year university that, um, you know, they desire to go to. Um, do you uh, play a role? In, I've heard a lot about familia and uh, getting across to these students that they're not just a cohort, they're familia. Do you as an advisor, how do you play a role in that in getting that across to the students? Yeah, so I do check-ins with my familia, with my students, just to make sure that, you know, the semester is going. Um, and then as well, I link up just like Natalie was saying, I follow up with them when I hear any concern from the professors um, in regards to the classwork that they're doing or missing classwork. And just like Natalie said, um, advisors do get a early alert. However, our early alert is personal. And so I will follow up with the student just to make sure that they complete whatever they're missing and also uh, let the professor know. And so that's how we communicate and create that familia sense. Do the students get special opportunities as being a part of this familia, maybe registering early or, or other opportunities? Yes. Yeah, so early registration is um, a benefit that students do get. And then as Clayton was um, has said previously, they get to do the work study. And then we also create uh, the opportunity for them to, you know, to build their resume. Um, mentorship allows them to have the network to be able to grow um, that professional development as well. And how do they how, what opportunities do they have to, to grow their professional skills? So, um, in the work study that they do have, we collaborate with their with their um, with their whoever they're working with here at the Southeast Student Services. We do have some students, and then we just follow up to make sure that they are arriving early. You know that they're completing their tasks, that they're not um, time management, that they learn to communicate whether they're running late or you know something happened to just make sure that those are the skills that they have when not only in the classroom, but as well as they continue on to their professional careers. Natalie, um, how many students do you currently have in this program and what type of growth are you looking at in maybe next semester and beyond? There's a little over uh, 200 students. Wow. Right now. Okay. Uh, I, I know the, the goal originally for this year was 500 students. And so I think that that's, that will probably be our goal uh, for next uh, year. And wanting to have a presence at um, most of the campuses. We don't have a presence at all of the campuses yet. And even in speaking with some of the advisors, they've requested um, to have a cohorts at their campuses. And I just want to say in terms of uh, professional development that there is the, the mentor uh, opportunity that we have for students in their second year in the program where we match them with the professional. Let me ask you this. I know over the pandemic, we lost a lot of students at HCC, mainly because they lost their job, they went to work, they have family commitments, and they may not be back in college yet. Do you think having them, and I'll open this up to whoever would like to answer this, do you think having the students in this cohort or familia keeps them more engaged than a student who's just attending a few classes at HCC uh, who may have been lost over this pandemic? I think that that yes, it can um, because we we are trying to you know follow up with them right. If we see somebody kind of dropping out, 
uh, there, there are a lot of, it, it's, it's a lot of levels, right? It's the faculty member, it's their advisor, and then it's me as coordinator, you know, looking at what's, what's going on with the student. And so def, there's definitely those kinds right. of support networks. Um, but also, I mean, an, another thing is just, it, it's hard for students to, to know how to navigate college and that we're trying to demystify all of that and to kind of bring the resources to them rather than saying like, oh, well, you're having trouble, go to a tutor. You know, we're trying to bring the resources to them instead. Thank you both for being here and uh, giving us a different perspective. We're gonna take a short break. After this commercial break, we'll return and we'll meet some of these students from the Puente program. The topic continues in 60 seconds. Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or up in your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Things could be stranger, but I don't know how. I'm going through changes, through all of the strangeness. I'm going through changes now. Welcome back to the topic. We're live every Tuesday afternoon and this one at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube. And you can watch the rebroadcast of our show on HCC TV. We're talking about the Bridge or Puente program here at HCC. And right now we're joined by a couple of students in the program, Casey Hicks and Shane Kumitz, both current Bridge program students. Good afternoon to you both. I'm going to start with you, Casey. Let's talk about what the program looks like for you. Maybe you can tell us uh, a day-to-day -day basis. What does a Bridge program student do? Yeah, so um, for a Bridge Puente student as myself, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I will say that the classes are super interactive. Um, as stated before, it really feels like a family, a familia. Um, you definitely interact with your classmates. Um, your professors provide an interactive and engaging, you know, classroom lecture setting. Um, basically, you know, no child is left behind. No student is left behind. Um, say if, you know, you're falling behind in your courses, you're falling behind in your classes, you miss a day in class, you know, you always have your professors checking in on you, making sure that you have all the course materials, all the tools that you need to be successful in your course. And you also have students, you know, always looking out for each other, um, always making sure that everybody is on track and um, on the road to success. And Shane, I'm going to ask you, we hear a lot about this cohort or familia. And as Casey just mentioned, your classmates check up on you. Let's talk about, have you developed a uh, more of a, a friendship with the students that you're in this cohort with right now than if you were just going to classes at HCC without getting to know everyone. Oh, absolutely. I've made a ton of friends when I was starting out college. You know, uh, I was just minding my own thing. And, you know, I met a lot of these people and they're a lot like me, you know, they're doing their thing. They're in college. There are people that are older than me, younger than me. Uh, but yeah, I, I have several of their numbers actually. And it, it it's all very nice. We all get to come together and we do, and we, we work together to do our own work. It's, you know, as what Casey said, you know, no one goes behind. And I think that's really important. Uh, in terms of, you know, being by yourself, because when you're by yourself, you're just doing things on your own. But when right. you're together as a group, you, you know, you get a lot more stuff done than you can intend yourself to do. And I think that's a very important thing about this program. Uh, do you, Shane, let me ask you this too. Do you have study groups with your, uh, with your classmates that, um, that you participate in with the familia? 
sometimes, yes. Uh, I go to the library almost every day uh, and do my work. And sometimes, uh, you know, we come together and uh, and we sit together and we talk about our work and we talk to each other, and get to know each other. Yeah, it, it's a the study group. It's I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, the, the study group, it's very close, I would say, right. it, 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 you know, there's a lot of things going on in the study group, but. Well, it sounds like it, it sounds like it's working out perfectly for you. Casey, let me ask you, uh, what about working with the faculty that you uh, that you've had a chance to deal with the professors? What are they like in the program? Um, I would say that they're super caring. Um, it's more than, you know, what you would experience in a regular course, in a regular class. I feel as though the Bridge Puente professors, um, they really take their time to ensure that their students, you know, are doing well in the courses, you know, aren't falling behind and, you know, have all the tools that they need. Um, even with the work study program, I work personally with um, Professor Garza and she's super helpful. You know, she makes sure I have all the tools that I need. Um, She's just a great <laughs> professor to work alongside. I really, since I joined the Puente program, you know, I gained a lot of confidence and, you know, it's just an amazing program to be a part of. Well, let me, I'm going to ask you both this next question. Um, and so Casey, you got a little chance to prepare for it, but I'll start with Shane. Shane, um, what are you studying now? What are your plans beyond HCC? And what do you ultimately want to do when you graduate? Oh, <laughs> uh, so right now I'm majoring in criminal justice and uh, and it's going good so far. Uh, after I graduate from HCC, I'm going to transfer up to uh, Sam Houston State University. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, it's a very perfect college for someone like me. And after I, uh, and after I graduate Sam Houston State University, uh, I was thinking about doing something like uh, being in the uh, the CSI field, sort of. Thing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah crime, uh, crime, crime scene investigator, all that kind of stuff. And it's uh, there's a lot of paths for me to go down onto this route. And uh, but you know, there's there, there's still some time for me to decide whether I should go down this path or this path. But sure. I know definitely about what my major, what my field is going to be in. Definitely. Well, you definitely sound determined. So that's one good thing. Casey, I'll ask you the same question. Where, what are you uh, majoring in? Where are you headed after college? Yes. Yeah, so I'm currently majoring in business management. Um, after I do graduate from HCC, I plan on going to the University of Houston. All right. Um, and after I finish, you know, my four years there, I plan on opening up my own business. <laughs> I'm not completely sure where I'm going with that, but I know definitely that um, I'll be opening possibly my own practice. I'm kind of interested in dabbling a little bit into law um, or I can just um, open up my own practice, maybe helping other people find opportunities and jobs as well. Well, it's very inspirational. I'm happy for you both. It sounds like you both are uh, you're you're moving in the right direction, and we appreciate you joining us here on the show this afternoon. Of course, uh, if you'd like to learn more about the Puente program, the Bridge program here at HCC, we're going to have some links to the program in our social media post after this show. We're going to wrap up this live Tuesday afternoon edition of the topic. Thanks for being here. Remember, you can follow us in social media at uh, Houston Community College District across all platforms. And you can download the audio versions of our podcasts at hccs.edu slash podcasts. I'm Todd Duplantis. I'll see you next week right here on The Topic.